hi there, and welcome to my webinar on tight turns and collection. My name is Stephanie Williams. I'm a One Mind Dogs instructor. I've been with One Mind Dogs since 2017. Um, I've been doing agility since 2010. I run a Sheltie, who is my main dog, and also I have two young Border Collies coming up and two retired Shelties that are here at home as well. And today we'll be talking about, as you saw, collection and tight turns, which are a really important topic for us. We do want to make sure that our dogs are turning really well, that they're prepared for when a turn is coming up so that we can keep them safe as they move through the course and also make sure that they exit the current obstacle facing the next one, which turns help us do. Um, and also they get us the best times. So we're going to talk today about collection and tight turns. And there's uh, several points that we'll go over pertaining to those. But before we do that, um, I do want to first talk a little bit about One Mind Dog's method and where it came from and how it works. And so our method originated with this dog that you see in front of you on the screen here. Her name is Tekla and with her, her owner, Janita Leninen, which is our um, leading coach and founding member, our founding coach. And she when she was working with her dog, Tekla re realized that she or that Tekla was losing her hearing. And at the time, which was in the 90s, um, late 90s and early 2000s, we were doing a lot of verbal cues when we were running agility. And so when your dog begins to lose their hearing, then we can't rely quite so much on verbal cues. And so Yanita quickly realized that she needed another way of doing things. And so she began to study Tekla's natural reactions to her body language, to Yanita's body language. And so from that, Yanita developed One Mind Dog's method um, and began to understand how dogs naturally understand us and our communication. And for dogs, body language is their natural mode of communication. It's how they interact with each other. And they do think that we are body language based creatures as well, even though we do a lot of speaking. And so our method was born based on Yanita's observations of first Tekla and then other dogs and then other coaches joined as well and we created this whole network, um, all based on the dog's perspective. And so dogs keep on teaching us and we keep on learning new things um, so that we can really make the sport of agility as fun for them as it is for us and make sure that we have also the magical connection between the dog and ourselves um, and that we feel that on the course and that also that um, reading the course is as easy as possible for the dogs because we do use their natural language and their perspective at the forefront of everything we do. So this is where um, our method originated was with this this dog, Tekla, and with Yanita Leinanen. And then later, of course, you've heard of Yako. He's Yako uh, Swaknuti. He joined as well and several other coaches. And then eventually this whole network, including myself and many other um, coaches across the world. And so we've learned from thousands of dogs worldwide. Um, and they all understand this method the same way. Um, so much of what we'll talk about today is all based on dog's natural understanding of our physical cues, our handling elements, but also we will talk about the role of verbals um, in collection as well. So these are the points that we'll cover today. Um, what is collection? First of all, let's make sure that we understand what we're talking about when we're discussing that topic. Um, how do we teach this to our dogs? And what, what do our dogs understand about collection? Like, what is it that they see from us that actually signals them to collect? We'll look at examples of handling techniques also, um, that cue collection. And you'll also talk about what is important within those handling techniques. So what does the dog see and how do they understand that? And how does that cue collection for them? What's important, right? So what is their perspective? We're always keeping that at the forefront. Um, and then we will also discuss a little bit of troubleshooting. And I think you'll see a lot of overlap between those last four topics, um, handling techniques, how to handle collection, and some of the troubleshooting. So you'll kind of see those things go together. So we'll start first with what is collection and collection refers to the dog's stride and what is the length of their stride. And so when dogs are running through a course, they'll choose a stride length based on many factors. But to be very simple about it, when we're talking about collection, we're talking about the shortened stride that helps them to turn. So if you look at the two examples in this photo, in these photos below here, um, you'll see on the left an extended stride. So an elongated stride, full length, and dogs will take an extended stride when they're running fast. And of course, there are other factors that influence that in our handling. Um, but you can see there that even though that Sheltie is a medium-sized dog, 
that extended stride is quite a bit longer than even the large strided dogs collected stride that you see on the right. So if you compare the two, because on the right, we can see here a collected stride. And if a dog jumps in collection, that's what helps them to turn tightly. So they have to shorten their stride in order to turn tightly. If they don't, if they jump in, a, in an extended stride, like the one on the left, they will turn wide. Okay, so we have to help them to understand to collect their stride, to shorten their stride before they reach the takeoff in order for them to turn tightly. Okay, so we're, we're really there having an impact on um, the length of the dog's stride when we're talking about collection and collection leads to tight turns. Now, collection has to be taught. Now, some dogs naturally collect really well, and that's great, but we approach this with all dogs that we teach them collection, whether they're naturally good jumpers or not. So for us, it's important to make sure that they have the skills that they need in order to, in order to navigate whatever they might see on the course. Um, and as soon as we start to raise the bar when we're, when we're beginning to um, teach jumping, this is when we start to also teach them how to collect. And the exercises that we use for that are meant to teach the dog to sort of dive over the bar, as you can see in the photo there, and how to like how to efficiently use the body over the jump when turning. And, and also importantly, to put their head down um, when they are jumping. So these are the, the teaching, the basic teaching for a couple of the techniques that you'll see today, which are called human arrow and reverse wrap. So I'm going to show you a video example of that now, of two of them actually. Um, this first one is human arrow. And here you'll see exactly that example of um, teaching the dog how to dive over the bar, right? So we're starting with a low bar first and the handler on the ground and positioned quite close to the bar so that we really encourage the dog to dive over the bar and land um, in a certain way, which you'll see in a moment. And it's done with a food lure at first, there you go. So dropping the hand down to, to get the dog to drop their, their head as well and dive over the bar. We do this with a food lure at first, so there's a cookie in the hand. And here you'll see that the positioning of the hand is also really important. Um, so that if your elbow is up and your palm is towards the ceiling, then, and your knuckles pointed towards the floor, then you're really gonna help the dog to understand um, how to follow that, that signal and that food lure that's in the hand and jump over the bar in such a way that will encourage them to collect, dive over the bar and land with their head low, just like that. Okay, so really important. So this is the first teaching phase of this, is just to get them to understand this point and also that they learn to jump close to the handler. So you can see there, like the handler's position doesn't allow for a whole lot of room between the bar and the dog. Um, because many times when we're on a course, like the dog has to be near us and has to be willing to collect when we're close by. So that's really important too. Um, so that, that is human arrow teaching and human arrow is also a technique that you'll see later, um, that we use with the dogs. So that's the first teaching phase and similar to human arrow. Another way that looks a lot similar, um, is reverse wrap training. And this is the same concept that we have a food lure in the hand and we want the dog to mark to the hand, dive over the bar with their head low. Here now you can see though the handler is standing up. Um, and now we progress to dropping the dropping a toy on the landing instead of um, using a, so we'll watch that one again, I think. Um, you'll see watching that dropping the toy on the landing instead of using a food lure. So that's the next progression for this one. Um, and in this, the handler does stand up instead of kneeling because here we're not queuing quite as much collection. Reverse wrap has a little bit of difference from human arrow. Um, because it, it starts from a backside send. So the dog is already beginning to turn tightly from that. So there's a bit of difference, but um, those two techniques will help you to get your dog started on teaching collection. And here's another one that will too. Um, this is called Yako Turn. Yako is an, Yako Swaknuti is another of our um, founding coaches and leading coaches. Um, and this, this particular technique got named after him because he invented it. And so here you'll see um, how you can use a pre-placed reward. And also we're going to pay attention to the position of the handler and the physical cues. So the handling elements, right? So the handler is looking at the dog is positioned um, with the wing right behind, um, chest uh, laser and toes are pointed to the takeoff point of the obstacle. And so and if you're on our website and studying, you'll see these, um, these captions so that you can really get the, the full understanding of what we're teaching. And there you can see there that the dog reads those cues, collects, and then the reward is there um, to help them in those early teaching phases. So they're seeing the cues and those cues are pretty natural for them, but nevertheless, the reward is there to help them as well. And so Yako Turn is another one um, that we can use to teach collection and then later also to handle collection. And you'll see that again um, 
later in today's presentation. Right now here we add a little bit more distance from the obstacle and a little bit of handler motion. So next, another important phase in teaching collection is that once the handler starts to move, the dog has to understand that they still need to collect. So we have to go to that phase as well. All right. So these are the things that we teach um, to our young dogs when we're beginning to teach them um, how to collect um, <clears throat> and how to like how to react to our handling and collect when they see that, even if the handler is moving. So having a reward on the intended line helps out a lot. And then we can progress from there to dropping a reward, whether you drop it or the assistant does. Okay. And there we go. And then we can reward from the hand as well. Okay. So that's Yako turn, yet another way of teaching and also handling collection. So again, you'll see that one um, again in a little bit but here we'll keep going. Um, so now that we've looked at some ways that you can begin to teach your dog how to collect, let's also talk about their perspective and what do they need to see or what are some of the things that they see from us that will also help um, to cue collection. And one of the most important things to remember uh, when we're talking about cueing collection and the dog's perspective on collection is that motion, our physical motion as the handler is the strongest of the elements, strongest handling element that a dog will react to. So the faster that you run, the faster your dog will run and also the bigger their stride will be. And they're more likely to carry forward and also work at a distance from you. So all those things are factors um, based on your speed. Now, if you begin to slow down, so a change in that rhythm then the dog will also naturally react by slowing down, adding strides, and collecting. And they'll also want to turn toward you. So your, your motion is a huge impact on what the dog does as they move through the course. Um, also, they will react to where are where is your chest laser pointed? So opposite hand and turning the chest laser towards the dog um, kind of go hand in hand. That if you lift the hand that is opposite to the side the dog is on, so for example, if your dog is on your left and you lift your right hand and raise it, that will turn your chest laser towards the dog. And in most cases, the dog will then react by adding a stride and collecting. And you'll see an example of this um, in, in a moment. So that's another way that we can show the dog that, hey, you need to add a stride here so that we can turn tightly. You can move towards the takeoff point. And in many of our techniques, you will see um, that it's uh, that the feet are and toes should point towards the dog's takeoff point as well as the chest laser. And these two elements pointing towards the takeoff point will cue for the dog to collect. All right. So how strongly you do that depends on what the dog, each individual dog needs. But in general, these things will cue collection. Whereas if you point your chest laser and your toes towards the landing side of a jump, your dog will interpret that as go in extension and they will go wide. Okay. So you'll see that shortly as well. Um, you can lower your hand. If you lower your hand, your dog will see it and they will likely add strides. And also we do teach verbal cues that help the dog to collect. And verbal cue timing is really important. We'll talk about it um, in a little bit. And of course, we have to train our verbal cues alongside the collection, the, that teaching that we do so that the dog is understanding that verbals and handling are all going together. So verbal support, the handling the dog sees. Um, but we can teach that also. So I'll show you now a video example of these different ways that you can cue collection, right? So first we see no collection, just two strides and handler moving forward. All right, so handler motion, steady forward, toes and chest laser pointed to the landing side, dog takes two strides and thinks the tunnel's the next obstacle, right? Now, if we make a rhythm change, so watch carefully the change in the handler's motion. See this slow down? So the handler changes the rhythm, the dog adds a stride, collects and turns tightly. And the timing of that slowdown is one stride before the dog reaches the takeoff at the latest. Now lower the hand, that will catch the dog's eye. And again, the dog adds a stride, not as tightly as the previous one, but still you can do that. Here's the opposite arm. Now remember this turns the chest laser towards the dog. And again, here you can see the dog adds strides and by adding strides, they are turning more tightly. And here too, really rotating fully in towards the dog. Causes them to collect their stride, shorten their stride, prepare to turn tightly. And there we get an even tighter turn, okay? So these are the ways that the dogs will naturally react and see um, and understand collection cues. So you have lots of ways just in that one example that you can cue collection. And you'll see these, these examples come up, these little, um, these little details come up in the handling techniques that we study later. 
Um, but these are the different ways that your dog is reacting to your handling and that you can cue collection. And maybe the most important ones in this are rhythm change, timely proactive rhythm change, chest laser and feet towards the takeoff point, um, and also watching the dog. So do make sure you're looking at your dog when you're cueing collection as well. All right, next we'll look at techniques that cue collection. Now that we've talked a little bit about the dog's perspective. Um, of course, there are many ways that we can cue collect, uh, collection and we have 30 handling techniques. These are just a few examples, um, but you'll see some, um, some good examples of what we just talked about um, in these and also a little bit more. So I want you, as we go through these video examples that I'm gonna show you of each of these techniques, to pay attention to the handling elements. And so that means, just as a quick review, that means um, handler's motion, their position, their eyes, their chest laser, their feet, their arms, and finally their voice. And all of these things should come together to tell the dog to turn tightly. So we're not saying to the dog, jump. We're saying to the dog that there is a tight turn here. It's, there just happens to be a jump on that line. And so that's why you can see in the examples below, particularly the, the two um, Yako turn and front cross, there actually is a line drawn there because our job is always to handle lines. And so when we're cueing collection, that's what we're thinking of is that there is a tight turn here. That's the line I want my dog on. That line just happens to have a jump on it. And the jump is the dog's job. Um, so be thinking of those handling elements because you'll see some commonalities between them, um, with, between these techniques. All right, let's go to the first video and this is reverse wrap. So this is now the finished product of that reverse wrap teaching video. We just watched a moment ago and here you can see Yanita's position um, is quite close to the wing, but such that the dog can see the wing. Dog side leg is forward, chest laser is pointed to the end of the wing and she's watching the dog. And because she's standing still, the dog will come closer to her and turn more tightly. Now we did see that this technique starts with some basic teaching, but you can see there that you can show the dog to collect and turn tightly using this technique and partially because of the teaching that we've done and also because of the handling that they see, right? So the handler has made a rhythm change, they're standing still, um, position is one step away from the tight turn intended line. We're watching the dog, chest laser points to the end of the bar, toes to, or to the end of the wing, I'm sorry, toes point to the end of the wing, arm over the bar, watch the dog. And all of these things come together for the dog to say, turn tightly. Now you might also have a backside cue if, if the approach line is to the backside and you also might have a tight turn collection cue that you use with this as well. Um, but the dogs are reading all of those things together when they are reading reverse wrap handling or any other type, type of tight turn handling, right? An arm over the bar we, we saw in the teaching phase helps to help helps to square the dog to the bar. So it's help, part of what helps the dog learn to add that stride and collect over the bar rather than taking the bar wide or taking it on a slice. Let's look at another example. This one is human arrow. We've also watched the teaching phase of this one. And here you'll see this one makes more of a 90 degree turn. And again, the handler has made a rhythm change. So they're standing still. Toes and chest, uh, chest laser is pointed to the takeoff. Well, toes are pointed where the dog is going next, but chest laser heavily to the takeoff, really watching the dog, leaning over and marking the bar similar to the teaching. And you can see there that the dog will add strides um, due to the, all of those elements saying the same thing. So if the handler's position were a little bit off, if they were um, too far back, for example, unlikely that the dog would collect well there, um, or if the handler is not looking at the dog, or if their chest laser is pointing to the wrong place. So if all of the elements are saying the same thing to the dog, then they react naturally by collecting with maybe in this instance, just a little bit of teaching. And you can see there how well the dog can turn. Right, feet here pointing where the handler is going next, but still the chest laser towards the takeoff and eyes on the dog, really important. The, again, the hands over the bar, helping to helping the dog to add a stride before takeoff. So that's human arrow, really useful technique for getting some really nice collection. Let's next look at Yako turn. So we looked at the teaching phase of this one as well. This is another really nice technique for a cueing collection. So you get here a tight wrap around a wing, like a, a sort of a U-shaped line. And again, you can see the handler makes a rhythm change before the dog reaches the takeoff. There, okay. The handler's toes and chest laser are pointed towards the takeoff. The handler is watching the dog. 
and the dog collects. All right, so again, rhythm change before the dog reaches the takeoff. Chest laser and toes pointed at the takeoff the dog would jump from as if they were going to go straight. And that's always important when we're uh, handling a takeoff point is it is the takeoff point the dog would jump from if they were not turning. And that helps to get collection. Oftentimes we point our toes towards the bar. Um, we'll talk more about that in the troubleshooting section, but that is one of the ways that really helps us. Also watching the dog, really, really important. All right, so there you go again, toes pointed to the takeoff, dog side leg is forward, hands are low, and it's using the same guiding arm, and here, collection cue. And if we're giving collection verbal cues, then we give them at least one stride before takeoff, just like we would um, think about the handling. So always being proactive, really, really important with collection. With all handling, it's important. But when it comes to collection, if we don't give those signals at least one stride before the dog reaches the takeoff, then they will not have time to collect their stride. And that's where sometimes we end up with wide turns too. Here is front cross. Um, I'm going to start it one more time because here you can see this first front cross is not collected. This one is. So front cross we can use to create a wide variety of lines um, and we can certainly use it to create collection. And you can see there that when the handler wants collection, there is a rhythm change. And it happens at least one there, one stride before takeoff. As well as chest laser and toes pointing to the takeoff point, hand low, eyes on the dog, verbal collection cue. So here again now, front cross without any collection. And we can see here the dog ends up on a line that goes farther, right? Because the handler is not making much of a rhythm change, but just rotating through the front cross, so no collection. But when we want collection, rhythm change, at least one stride before takeoff, chest laser and toes point at the takeoff, eyes on the dog, verbal collection cue, all these things come together to tell the dog, add a stride, there it is, and the dog collects. Now, we also have to consider reality lines when it comes to collection. They won't all turn equally as tight, and sometimes we think of lines that are not realistic for what the dog can do, um, but there you can see the difference. And here too, just a little bit of rhythm change gets you some nice turning. All right, so again, no rhythm change. You can see where the dog lands, makes a correction stride, is facing the next correct obstacle. And again, remembering to watch the dog. Even though the dog's looking at the obstacle, you are looking at them. Only one member of the team can look at the obstacles, and it is the one with four legs. Really important. So here again, watching the dog, rhythm change, chest laser and toes point at the takeoff, and we get that collection. So again, always these handling elements are saying the same thing. So again, here, no collection, I'm just moving through the front cross. Now, rhythm change, there it is, collection. Rhythm change, chest laser and toes point at the takeoff, eyes on the dog. And I think front cross is one of those techniques that we um, we use quite often. And many times we use it to in, intending to cue collection and then it doesn't happen. And most often that is because the handling is late or the elements are not all saying the same thing. So there now you can see the correction stride there facing the next correct obstacle here too. And for, again, verbal cue, um, tight turning for front cross, which we want to give at least one stride before takeoff, just like we're doing the handling. So proactive. All right, so those are four examples of techniques um, that you can use to cue collection. And we have plenty more that, to learn about on the website, um, but that will give you some really good examples um, <clears throat> of that. Now, let's get into a little bit more detail on what's important in terms of handling collection. So we talked in, the, in those examples um, about the seven handling elements and how they all come together to communicate to the dog to shorten their stride. And, and jump in collection and turn tightly. And it is really important that we remember timing when it comes to all handling, um, particularly when we're talking about collection, because the dog needs time to see and react to the handling in order to make those preparations, in order to shorten their stride, add a stride, collect and turn tightly. And so they have to see the handling happen at least a stride before they reaches they reach the takeoff point. 
Okay, so one stride before takeoff, you'll hear a lot. That is the latest possible um, time that you can finish the handling. Ideally, it's a bit more proactive than that. Um, and many times when dogs turn wide, it was because the handling was late. So for example, the front cross was completed while the dog was in midair or when they reached the landing instead of before takeoff. So timing is really, really important. Um, and you'll see an example of this in a moment. Um, we all we already talked about how all seven handling elements need to work together to cue collection. Um, so meaning that you're you've made a rhythm change in a timely fashion, that your position is is in most cases one step away from the intended line, um, that you're looking at the dog, that your chest laser is pointed in many cases towards the takeoff point, in many cases toes towards the takeoff point as well, hand low, um, verbal cue. Right. And all of these things need to say the same thing. And connection, we already mentioned, look at the dog. Um, if you tend to turn your head away and look where you're going, they either pass the obstacle, they go wide. Um, things happen that um, we didn't intend. So make sure you do watch your dog. And one more point on verbal cues. This is something that happens a lot, that verbal cues are really helpful for supporting handling. So training a collection cue um, is a big help. But the collection, the verbal collection cue has to have the same timing as the physical cues do. So handling elements one through six, what we give at least one stride before takeoff, same thing with the verbal. If you wait until the dog is in the air, which is what in many cases um, what happens, then it's too late. And so that verbal cue doesn't hold its meaning. Um, whereas if it's given with the handling and all these things are saying the same thing, it's given at least one stride before takeoff, then your dog will know exactly what they need to do. Um, so let's take a, now, a look now at another video example where we'll see this timing comparison. Right, so here now we need a tight turn in order for the dog to come to the correct side. And you can see that that was just a little bit wide. And the reason it was a little bit wide was because the collection cues were given late. Now here, when the collection cues are given on time and all seven elements say the same thing, you can see the difference in where the dog lands. Much easier for them to come to the correct side of that next jump. So one stride, at least one stride before takeoff, all seven handling elements are saying the same thing and the dog really well prepares to collect and turn tightly there. So really important that they get to see the handling um, and have time to react to it. So timeliness is really, uh, is a big factor in terms of cueing collection. All right, let's talk now a little bit on how we can troubleshoot. So what are the reasons why collection doesn't happen? And we've talked a bit about this already um, in today's presentation, but here are the, a few of the most common um, examples of why collection doesn't necessarily happen. One of the biggest ones is rhythm change is too late or didn't happen. So if the handler is just running forward, the dog will continue to go with an extended stride um, and will prepare to jump in extension as opposed to collecting. Um, or you might see chest laser and feet are pointed to the landing side of the jump as opposed to towards the takeoff. So again, another really common reason, particularly in front cross, where sometimes dogs still go wide is because those elements were saying to the dog go in extension. So if your chest laser and your feet point to the landing, your dog will think extension, even if you make the rhythm change. So it's important that all those things say the same thing. Forgetting to look at the dog. So if we're looking at the obstacle, for example, we may not get the collection. So remember to watch your dog and watching your dog also supports seeing commitment and being able to do the handling on time. So that is the other part of why it's important to watch the dog is that if you are looking at the obstacle, you can't actually see the moment of commitment until the dog gets into your field of vision. And that's where handling can end up becoming late. So if you're looking at your dog, you'll see them commit early. You can finish the handling on time. So remember to watch your dog. Um, and that leads into the next point there that the handling is just late. So making sure that you finish the handling at least one stride before the dog reaches the takeoff. Um, and also sometimes dogs are just not trained in collection. Some of them really prefer to stay in extension. So we want to make sure we're teaching um, collection to them. And that's why we teach to all dogs because that way they're just really re well prepared for what they need to do on the course. Um, so let's take a look now at a couple of other examples. And here you'll see this is one of the most common ones. The handler just kept on running forward and the rhythm change was late. And so 
because feet and chest laser are pointed to the landing and rhythm change happened when the dog landed, the dog was already prepared to continue going forward. So this dog made a decision now, now and there you go. When the, when the rhythm changes on time, the dog can prepare, right? So as soon as they're committed to the jump, they're gonna make a decision as to what line to take next. And so that's why they need to see proactive handling. And you can see there the difference that if the rhythm changes on time, and the handling elements are supporting the takeoff and the handler is watching the dog. Then the dog collects and turns tightly. Let's look at another one. And here's a nice side-by-side -side of the two differences. So here on the left, handling elements are all pointing to the landing and the rhythm change is late, the dog goes wide. On the right, handling elements were supporting the takeoff and the rhythm change was on time and the dog turned really nicely. All right, so here we can see it again, that, that rhythm change before takeoff, the dog turns um, quite tightly, whereas rhythm change late and handling elements to the landing, dog turns wide. So, so remember to support the takeoff point, watch the dog, make your rhythm change on time. And including the direction of the handler's feet, really important there. So they are watching all of those signals. And yes, verbal, verbal tight turn cue is important as well. And then all of those things come together um, to communicate to the dog really clearly in a way they easily understand to turn tightly um, on the course. All right, so that is our presentation today on collection and tight turns. Of course, there's plenty more to learn about this topic. Um, so we hope to see you on the One Mind Dogs website where we have lots and lots you can study um, to help you teach collection, cue collection, um, and get really good at handling tight turns. Um, so thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If you have questions, um, come and see us on the website and um, keep an eye out uh, in your um, inbox for the follow-up emails as well. And hopefully we will see you at One Mind Dogs soon. Bye.